This 2023 study on over 300 athletes aged 50 to 60 found something surprising. The fittest athletes, the ones doing the most long climbs, threshold efforts, and fast group rides showed more coronary artery calcification. That's the opposite of what most of us expect. We ride to protect the heart, not to harden it, but it wasn't about training more. It wasn't total volume that raised the risk. It was too much at high intensity, like long climbs or threshold efforts, without enough recovery. So in this video, I'll show you how to protect your heart without losing performance, and how the science actually supports training deep into your 60s and beyond. When we talk about heart problems in endurance athletes, we're really talking about two things, the structure of the arteries and the rhythm of the heart. Arterial calcification changes structure. Atrial fibrillation, or AF, affects timing. AF is a chaotic heartbeat that becomes more common with age and heavy training. Studies show the risk rises roughly 15 to 20% for each decade of high intensity endurance work. Here's what's happening. Your atria, the small chambers at the top of the heart, act like a booster pump, giving each beat an extra push. In AF, that coordination is lost. The pump wobbles instead of firing cleanly. You might not feel it at first, but over time you'll notice a ceiling. You can't hold power as long, recovery slows, performance fades, not from fitness, but from rhythm loss. And the causes aren't just intensity or volume alone. They're cumulative, so high load, dehydration, poor sleep, low energy availability, chronic stress, all compound risk. One simple red flag, if you ever feel deep, hard to localize chest discomfort during exertion, that's not fatigue. That's a signal worth checking. Let's talk about recovery. Recovery isn't the absence of training, it's part of the cycle. Sleep, nutrition, and rest aren't soft options. They're what make adaptation possible. Here's another insight the research highlights. Athletes who experience serious cardiac events are often the ones who ignore early signs. They train through illness, they race while dehydrated, they push when they already know they shouldn't. Cardiologists call this the I'll be fine problem, the mindset of the lifelong endurance athlete. It's not about genetics, it's about behavior. So one of the simplest ways to reduce your risk is if you're unwell on event day, don't race. That single decision might do more for your long-term performance than any new training method. Now, here's the part that gives me hope. Yes, the Mark II study found more calcification in endurance athletes who trained the hardest, but what it actually showed was more complex than that and more encouraging. Most of that plaque was stable, and that's important because stable plaque doesn't usually rupture. It's the soft, fatty kind, common in inactive populations, that leads to heart attacks. In fact, the same athletes who showed more calcification also had better heart health overall. So it's not just that endurance training is dangerous, but it does have effects. And like any adaptation, those effects depend on context. What tipped the balance wasn't training time. It was how much of that time was spent redlining and how well it was recovered from. And that's where the real takeaway is. The danger isn't volume, it's unmanaged intensity. Let's zoom out for a sec. Moderate, consistent endurance work doesn't just protect the heart, it may actually stabilize it. Athletes who kept most of their training easy showed better arterial flexibility and lower arrhythmia risk than those who trained harder but less often. In other words, the boring miles are the ones that keep your system young. Your body doesn't care how motivated you are. It cares about stress versus recovery, and that ratio shifts with age. Not because you're weaker, but because repair takes longer, but it doesn't stop. And that's why after 40, training intelligence becomes the new intensity. So know your zones. Keep most rides steady, save the hard efforts for when they count, and then make them count. 
This is the polarized model. It's not just theory here. I've seen this in hundreds of writers in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. The ones who stay strong don't train harder. They just manage their intensity better. If you've been around the sport long enough, you already know this. The riders who last aren't obsessed with suffering. They're obsessed with consistency. They train year round. They rarely miss sessions. That's what real discipline looks like after 40. You don't have to stop chasing numbers. You just have to train in a way that lets you keep chasing them for another 20 years. Track fatigue as carefully as fitness, build strength, not just endurance, and respect the quiet sessions as much as the hard ones. Because the takeaway from all of this science is refreshingly simple. Yes, decades of endurance training can change the heart, but it also builds one of the strongest predictors of lifelong cardiovascular efficiency. And the best way to protect it, that's exactly what I break down in the next video.